Uh, first, I would like to open up by saying uh, what a tremendous showing from our fans. Uh, I love the fact that they were here, but they were also felt. You know, they, they, we, they were here and we could hear them. Uh, they were truly involved in the game and we needed them in a tremendous way. And it was a special night, you know, with Women in, Sport, uh, Women in Sports Day. And Troy, I have to tip my hat to them because they're a high powered team. And for us to hold them to 59 points, that speaks volumes about um, our commitment to the defensive end and the players' commitment to being disciplined within the scout. I thought that um, it was going to be a hard fought battle. We opened up the game blazing hot, but then they found their footing and they were able to fight back into it. Uh, we knew that it was going to be a battle of the boards. You know, it was a it was a battle that we wanted to win, but if we did not win, I at least wanted us to be close. And I thought we did a great job of that. We only lost that battle by nine. But I, I want to talk highly about our ability to get the ball in the paint via penetration or through post play. And it showed up big for us in a major way tonight. And I can't speak any higher about the young lady to my left, a future pro. You know, I want her to have an opportunity to be able to continue her collegiate career because she has not only a strong story, but she has a strong level of competitiveness and love for the game. And she plays it the right way. She trusted us here at ODU. Um, she came in as a scoring guard and wanted to transform into a point guard. And I, I'm just so proud of her growth, uh, seeing her being able to manage a game now at this point. Minus some missed free throws here or a turnover or two there, but her ability to manage the game and do it with poise and do it with her mind and her voice rather than just her game, uh, I'm just super proud of that. She scored your last seven points. I mean, can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so that's Jordan. That's <laughs> Jordan. That, that's her. She wants the big moment. You know, sometimes people can shy away from those big moments. But Jordan, no, she's the one that's like, three, two, one. I'm shooting the three. Even though we're down four, I'm going to hit this three, get fouled, and I'm going to knock my free throw down. She's just, she just has this... Uh, dog within her. It's a fire that burns heavily within her to where she just loves competing, but more than that, she loves winning. And she put us on her on her back tonight, and she just willed us to a victory. We saw she had the hot hand, and sometimes she'll let me know, Coach, I'm feeling it. And I'm like, all right, call your plays. And then tonight, uh, I wanted to go to her because I wanted the ball to be in her hands so that we could get a for sure, a for sure good look at the rim every single time. The jumper was wet tonight. It was on <laughs> and popping, and I'm, I'm just I'm just gleaming on the inside for her. She deserves this moment. To both of you, is this hands down probably the best, almost complete game you all have played? Because they didn't take the lead until the second half. Yeah. Does that say a lot to both? Jordan, you first and the coach. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> um, I would say uh, I do think it's one of our uh, one of our better games of the season. I don't know if it's our best or not because to me, I, I be feeling like we have a lot of good games. But <laughs> I will say this one felt really good from start to finish. Yeah, I would agree. But um, I feel like uh, the Florida Gulf Coast game, I thought that was a solid showing on our behalf. Um, and there have been a few others, but this one probably is up there at the top. Um, when you're considering just how, how high-powered they are and the runs that they could go on and all the different ways that they can hurt you uh, from the shots that they take and then from the rebounds that they can go get off of those shot attempts. I thought that we had a concentrated effort and we had great intentions towards making them take contested shots, boxing out, getting the rebound, and we were methodical in our approach. They sped us up a few times, or we sped ourselves up a few times, and turned the ball over um, in crucial moments. But we were able to regain our composure and uh, work ourselves to a great win. And in Jordan's case, you talked about how you wanted to put this team on your back. Is this one of those nights where you said, OK, let's go. Don't, I want to hear it. Coach, I want the ball in the middle <laughs> No, uh, I, I, trust, I trust my coach. and. Um, today was just my day. Like some days, it might not be my day because we have a lot of players on our team who are capable of taking the last shot, and that's perfectly fine with me because I trust all my teammates. Mm -hmm. But today, they they trusted in me and they know I had it. So I, I told them, I said, "You can trust me. I promise I'll hit the free throws at the end," and that's exactly what they did. Mm -hmm.
Coach, how big is it to defend the home court? I guess a top level Sun Belt team, it's, one of the better teams in the league. Look, we're an Under Armour school, and their mantra is protect this house. And we write that on the board every single night. We must protect this house. Um, our record at home is, is is an amazing one. I think for a long time we only had like one loss, yeah. you know, and and we've had we've had a few, but still, our fans are accustomed to seeing us play a certain way, being in ball games, having an opportunity to win. Um, they expected that now, and they lived through that for 17 years, you know. With Wendy Larry at the helm, Marianne Stan Stanley at the helm, winning 17 conference championships. So this program was built on a tremendous foundation of winning. And it's only right that we continue to protect this house by playing a certain way because our fans deserve that and in hopes of us coming out with wins. Do you expect February to be like this, a dog fights every, every night? Most yes. definitely. <laughs> the Sun Belt Conference, some consider it fun. Woo! It is, it, it is going to test you. It's going to test your resolve as a, as a coach. It's going, to re, it's going to test your resolve as a player. Um, you're really going to have to be smart. So many coaches are, just, are legends when it comes to um, coaching on, uh, within the Sun Belt Conference. They've done tremendous things. So every night it's a different type of schematic that you have to pull out of your hat or either play against. Um, and it makes it exciting. It's a lot of hard work involved in it, but I love the fact that our program is proving that we have a place in this league and we are vying hard for a championship within it. Are you paying attention to the standings? I don't. I know she does. Yeah, every day. <laughs> so it's, it's getting close. Making it net. is. It is. You know, she lives and dies by a coach. Did you see the game? Coach, <laughs> coach. And I'm like, okay, Jordan, I'm scouting. I don't have time <laughs> to look at the standings. But I do know that it is a rat race in there. And, you know, there's a win or two that separates a lot of people. There is a cluster. Um, everyone's fighting for that coveted one through four spot, you know, going into the conference tournament. I just want us to be amongst those, you know, in some form or fashion. If we can just handle our business one game at a time, then I think we'll take care of our business. With a win like this to both of you, is this team dangerous right now to be messing with moving forward at this point? I think – I think um, what I like about us is our ability to bounce back. Yeah, we went on the road. It was tough. We had um, a lot of sickness going on, and we're still recovering from that. Hell, we're still recovering from the fact that we had to open up conference play two weeks on the road in a row. Four road games to open up conference play, that's unheard of. So that's something that we want to talk to the league about. They have to fix that because for the student-athlete experience, it's hard academically and it's hard on them physically too. Um, but we ended up losing to Arkansas State uh, because we really weren't ourselves. We were really trying to play out of sickness or play through sickness. To lose that game and to come back and find ourselves against Troy, it shows the stick to that we have and the, the, the size of the – the fight in the dog that is within us. People can count us out all they want, but one thing they can never measure is our will. And this team with this young lady as a leader, um, as our point guard, they have no choice but to compete and lay it all out on the line. Two years ago, you won a recruiting battle against Troy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I did. I did. That was a glorious day for our program. We, we were in desperate need of a point guard, and um, we called her. She gave us a chance. She said, all right, I'll, I'll, I'm a woman of my word. I'm going to come on a visit. And she came, and I felt like, and I told her this, I said, I feel like I'm having to um, convince you of otherwise. And everything that you could think that could go wrong on a visit went wrong. Yep. They, they missed the flight. They, there were delays. Oh, it, it was just a mess. And so we had to rearrange a lot of things on the fly. But um, I think she felt the genuineness um, about us. And she's, she loved the vision that we had for her. And that level of trust and love and respect is mutual between us. And, and it's been a match made in heaven. Yeah, that's that's exactly what happened actually. Uh, I went um, honest, honestly, for just to be honest, I I didn't know a lot about ODU except for like the past um, success, and I, I honestly didn't want to come.
this this close back to home, mm -hmm. but <laughs> when I came here, it just felt like she didn't want me as a player. You know, she wanted me as a person, and that was big to me because you know all I was hearing was, "Oh, you can score the ball. You know, I'll give you, I'll give you everything. I, I'll give you the ball. You can go do whatever you want to do." But she talked about changing me as an individual. You know, helping me grow as a, as a woman, and that's big to me because you know I need that. I need that growth, especially coming down to my last couple of years. Yeah. So was it between choice. Troy and ODU? Yes, <laughs> definitely between Troy and ODU. So does that make tonight even extra sweet? Yeah, a little, a little bit for me. Yeah, you know, it definitely helps to make, uh, let me know that I made the right decision. 2-0. Mm -hmm. Yes, 2 <laughs> And it continues. <laughs> and it continues. Coach, is, is Simone, when you brought her in, is, is, is she doing what you expected? Because she's really fun to watch working the board. She is fun to watch, but she frustrates me because I want her to be able to do more. She has such a high-powered game. It's explosive. I love her rebounding ability. I love the fact that uh, she idolizes Dennis Rodman, and she wants to take her game after him. She wants to wear her hair like him. She wants to uh, embody the essence of him when she's on the court. But I want her to see herself as more than that. You can be a tremendous rebounder, but she can also be a tremendous scorer in the paint. So the frustration part for me, even though I love her to death, I want her to be able to own the paint. You can own the glass, but I want you to own the paint as well, too. We were talking about her Ooh, during the game. He said, he said Robin. I said, you know, Barkley, because she's kind of shorter. Yeah, <laughs> but she reminded me of Robin. Yeah, Robin. She just, she just, I'm like. That's her man. You're not supposed to be playing that big at that size. No, like, that's, her, that's, that's her. She so. told me. She was like, Coach, you know who my favorite player is? I said, who? She was like, Dennis Rodman. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Coach. Yes. Um, Speaking about the, the size of the fight and the dog, mm -hmm. um, Troy pulled ahead in the third quarter mm -hmm. following that 8 0 lead, and then going down that stretch in the final minute, Jordan has like six points. What did you tell your team in the break to, again, like hit home that, like, hey, we're, this is not, this is, we're, we've got this? It was four <laughs> minutes and maybe 14 or 16 seconds left in the game. We were in a timeout. I think it was 53 53. Mm -hmm. And I told everybody, I said, you guys, let's just take a deep breath. Let's take a deep breath. We're going to win the game, but we have to do it by being poised. Mm -hmm. We have to compete, but we have to do it with composure. And um, I believe I probably said something directly to Jordan about managing the game and making sure that every time we come down on the, on the offensive end, get us in something. Make them have to play defense. I don't want anything quick. I want us to be methodical in our approach. And I thought that they did a great job of responding. Now, if you would have asked me to speak on a few timeouts before that, <laughs> while you turn <laughs> I have to go to church on Sunday and pray for forgiveness for some of the things I said. But um, um, they get the point. They, I think what I love most about my players is they understand my passion. You know, being a former player and doing it for as long as I did at the levels that I did it at, they get it. They do. I know sometimes it's kind of like, oh, my gosh, is she ever going to stop? Um, and then sometimes I can feel the energy, and I, I, I know that they trust me and they love me, and they're feeding off of that. So it's important that I give them what they need, not, not what I want, but what they need. And sometimes they need for me to just breathe sometimes and just talk them through some things. Jordan, uh, especially down that last little minute in the, in the fourth quarter, um, were you specifically looking for the ball or like the, the final two minutes? Were you calling for the ball or were you, were you just trying to get people open and the ball just ended up to you? Oh, I, I, actually, I was actually calling for the ball. Okay. <laughs> I, I told him, I said, because I, my team, I know they were getting a little out of whack with the free throws, and I told him, I said, I promise you, I'll, I'll make the free throws. If you trust me, I'll make the free throws. And, they were throwing it to me, and I said, well, I got to prove them. I got to mm -hmm. prove it to them now. Mm -hmm. And I think the, the one thing that made me the happiest was that we were actually not in the bonus. At all. Oh, <laughs> my gosh. We yeah, were like not three. in the bonus. Yeah, I was so happy. I was like, we actually, this is new. You know, normally we put the other team in the bonus, and they're shooting free throws galore at 38. We gave 38 to Arkansas State. Higginbottom had 20 by herself. You know, it makes it hard for you to win games like that. James Madison, they had high 30s in terms of free throw. They had 30 more free throws than us. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. That's unheard of. But for us to finally be in a position where teams had to be on their heels we're on, when we're on offense, that really made me feel good. It showed growth on our end. Anything else for Coach or for Jordan? Thanks, guys. See you on Wednesday. See you Wednesday.